Hello and thank you for joining me again. My name is David Ferrati, an NLP practitioner, hypnotherapist and success coach practicing here in the northwest of England. Now one of the things that many of my clients come to me for is the area of memory. And memory of course is something that nowadays we, le we need to rely less and less on because machines do it for us, whether that's you know your smartphone or your computer or just generally not needing to be as mindful of, uh, you know, actively using our memories as we used to. But that, of course, is a failure on our parts as humans, because obviously we need to keep what's up here as sharp as possible for later in life, especially in terms of beating off uh, more serious illnesses like dementia and Alzheimer's, etc. So what I want to do today is something a little bit fun with you. If you'd like to join in, please do. You see, very often we are, we've got this supercomputer in our brains and this supercomputer tends to represent 10% of our full potential. 90%, which is subconscious, is never tapped unless you start to train your memory in a certain way. All those memories and experiences, emotions that you've had all through your life from the moment you were conceived to this very moment are accessible if you know how. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to show you how to access distant memories. We're not doing that. What we're doing here is proving that the memory is far more powerful than you realise. And so if it is this supercomputer, why is it we have this experience? Have you ever had this feeling where you go into a room and suddenly think, why did I just walk in here? And you go and you try and find your keys and you're, you're absolutely convinced you put them in a certain place and for some reason they're not there. Or maybe you have the experience of not being able to remember a person's name or you can't remember your own telephone number at times or passwords. Well, that is a, a simply a failing of a, an untrained memory, a memory that's become a little bit lackadaisical, a bit complacent. And of course, like I say, as technology improves, we're going to find that that's going to be, become more and more of a problem. So what is the answer? How do you memorize things in a way that it sticks? Well, the key is, is that you've got to make it memorable in the first place. And the only way that you can speak to the language of the brain is to speak to it in the language it understands. It's not words. We don't talk in, in uh, we don't sort of remember things in terms of paragraphs of text and grammar. We remember it in terms of pictures. Pictures are the common language of the brain and in this sense, the memory. If I was to tell you, you know, if I was to ask you, can you describe your, your home or you could describe your car or could you describe your sofa? You're not looking at a passage of text appearing in front of you when you're thinking that thought. You're actually getting a sense of the picture of the, um, the sofa, the, the car, the house. You see, the language we speak in is often too complex. If you break it down into simple things that the mind can really latch onto, then you have a, a, good, a much better chance of, of remembering things. One of the other things that is a key to a very powerful memory is the ability to take that picture and make it as silly, make it as rude, make it as active, make it as, you know, uh, daft as possible. You see, if you don't believe that, let me just give you this, this thought. If you went into a crowd of people and you saw lots and lots of people in this room, do you think that you would remember their names after hearing it once? The chances are that that particular connection would be broken almost instantly. And the next time you got a chance to go on and say, oh, who was that I saw at the party? You wouldn't have a clue. But what if you came across that person at the party and they had a big red clown's nose, they had a big, you know, sort of white face and the normal clown's face, they had big floppy uh, shoes, and they had a loud voice, and let's say they introduced themselves and said, my name is Bob. Do you think you would remember that person then? You see, when we make things stand out to ourselves, we connect with them. We have an emotional attachment. Things that make us laugh, things that make us feel, ooh, that was a bit rude, that was a bit, you know, off. Those are the types of things that we tend to remember. So just as an example, I want to show you how you can memorise a list of 10 words, which I'm going to say to you very quickly. And this was originally, and I give credit here to a guy called Harry Lorraine in uh, How to Develop a Superpower Memory. And it's something that has served me all through my life in many, many different areas. But I want to share it with you now. And this list, which I'm going to say to you now, 
You've not, you're not allowed to write it down, you've just got to listen to it and try and memorise it the best you can. So here we go. The first word in this is wallet, second is snake, third is um, peaches, then we have screwdriver, we have drum, then we have book, we have piano, we have goat, we have mirror, and we have tank. Okay, you have a piece of paper in front of you now, write down the list I just said, without re rewinding the video, I'm not that daft, okay? So what I want you to do is to literally remember what I just said to you and write it down. Now, as soon as you feel you've got as far as you can, just stop. Because if you're like 99% of the population, that will not have been easy. Unless you've got a photographic memory or some real skill or ability, that is not easy. And the reason is, is because you haven't made any connection with those words while you've been listening to them. So we can change that. And the way we can change it is by making those particular things more memorable in a certain context. Now, what's the most important thing to do is to put this information into a place where you can recall it. A storage box, if you like. Well, we can create 10 storage boxes in a place which is very familiar to you indeed, and that's your own home. You see, you have 10 places in your own home that you can visit again and again and again. And if we can place each of those particular items in a creative way into each of those storage boxes, well, you'll know how to go into room number one and say, ah, that's what I remember. Room number two, ah, that's what I remember, and so on and so forth. This particular method, again, is not new. It's, it goes back to the Greeks thousands of years ago, I believe, and it comes into, you know, what's known as the loci method, the location method, if you like. So to take this to the next step, you now need to think of the rooms. You need to think of the rooms in your house. And what I'd like you to do is take a mental journey now. Close your eyes if this will help you. And I'd like you to think of the first room, which would be your bedroom. Now, as you think of your bedroom, I want you to place a huge wallet into this bedroom. Now, that's the first word on our list, wallet. And I want you to make a strong connection between your own bedroom and the wallet. Now, it's no good just to put a little tiny wallet on your bed. You won't remember that. It has to be exaggerated. It has to be full of colour. You may think of the wallet being stuffed with £50 notes. I wish. You can think about the smelling the leather. You need to bring all your senses into the equation. But the point is, the bigger and more exaggerated you make it, that's the key to remembering it. So room number one is your, is your bedroom, and you've put a wallet in it. Now go into room number two, and room number two is the bathroom. So I want you to go into the bathroom, whatever that is for you, and as you go into the bathroom, I want you to notice that the bath is full of snakes, okay? Now remember, this is just your imagination, and for all those people who are phobic of snakes, I apologise, but this is about memory, and I just want you to notice how the snakes are covering the bath. There are snakes up the shower head. There's a, a big snake with a big bowler hat smiling at you. And again, why is it we remember things like cartoons and maybe we have more difficulty remembering uh, fiction uh, and uh, things like, uh, you know, Shakespeare? The reason is, is because cartoons are colourful, they're funny, they're silly, and we make an emotional attachment with them. So make your snake into a cartoon snake. And you will remember that room number two, which is your bathroom, has a snake in it. Now, number three is is the word peaches, and we've got to connect that with the next location, the next memory box, if you like. Well, the next place in your house I'd like you to look for is a cupboard of some kind. Now, this cupboard shouldn't be in the same room as your bedroom. It should be, you know, somewhere else. Maybe an airing cupboard where the boiler is. That's usually a very good one. And you imagine that as you open the cupboard, you're suddenly not faced with just a peach. You're faced with hundreds of peaches pouring out of the cupboard. And in fact, you're barefoot. And when you step onto one of those peaches, it squelches beneath your toes, it gets sticky, and you think, ugh! And again, notice what we've done there is we've created emotion, we've created some kind of emotional connection. And position number three, which is the cupboard, you can connect with peaches. The next one is a uh, screwdriver. And I want you to go into another room that isn't your own bedroom, maybe another room that belongs to another member of the family. As you walk into this room, you see the word screwdriver, but we're not going to see a tiny screwdriver if you've learned what you've learned already. It's going to be a huge screwdriver that literally fills the room one end to the other. The screwdriver is so big, it's got a black and yellow head to it. 
a little bit like a bumblebee if you like, and it's got a massive shaft that goes right through and smashes through the window because it's that big. Now you're already getting the idea of how this works because now if we go back to the very first room in the house, room number one, which was bedroom, what do you think of? What's the first thing you think of? What was on the bed? And if you made that picture creative and vibrant and, if you like, uh, exaggerated enough, you'll remember that it was a wallet. If you go into the bathroom, suddenly the word that pops into your mind when you look at the bath and you look at the shower head is... And of course you said snake. If you then go into the cupboard and you open the cupboard and all the peaches fall out, that's peaches. Then you go into the next room that I told you about and you find that there's a, a screwdriver going right across the room. Then of course you remember screwdriver. Now, that is just four examples, four words. The other words, which are drum and book and piano, you do that with other rooms in your house. And those, if you'd like to write them down so you can start taking a mental journey and make that mental journey the same every time. The next would be staircase or stairs. If you don't have stairs, you live in a, you know, sort of a single story uh, apartment or bungalow in, in the UK, then just imagine the hall. That's fine. The next room... I guess, I guess uh, <clears throat> position number six is going to be your front room, the room nearest to the road. Position number seven is the back room, okay, where your dining areas may be. Number eight is then going to be the kitchen. Number nine is going to be the back door, the door that leads out to the garden or the yard. And number ten is the garden itself. Now, I've given you a quick example here for the, for the purposes of brevity uh, in terms of this YouTube video. But if you'd like to find out more, then click on the link that you can see here, which will take you to uh, a blog that I've written about this whole process, which will teach you a little bit more about how to make those links and other memory techniques as well. If you found this useful and you think that you'd, uh, you know, uh, you think other people would benefit, please share it. Please make sure that you comment on it. And uh, I'd love to hear from you. I really would. But for now, at least, this is David Fratian, and I'll see you next time.